Okay, so so that's the first one. Okay, that's the first one. Let's go to uh let me go to Mark eleven. Let's go to Mark 11, talking about uh, the way Jesus feels. And we know how merciful and graceful he is. But when you don't bear fruit, see, God starts showing me all this. Like, if you ain't going to bear no fruit, what good are you to him? What good are you to him if you ain't bearing no fruit? Because the purpose of ministry is to bring forth fruit. You know what I mean? Okay, check this out. Okay, Mark 11. Verse 12, and on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry and hungry. Watch this. So if you ain't bearing no fruit, then what are you doing for him? See, he not hung. Oh, man. He giving me he giving me this on the spot. OK, <laughs> on the spot. Check it. Check it. I'm off to break it down. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. So he had a desire. See, this is in the natural, though. I'm going to break it. I'm going to take you to the spiritual, though. He was hungry, so he had a purpose. The fruit had a purpose to fulfill his hunger, but it was no fruit. So you ain't, I, 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 I. <laughs> and seeing a fig tree afar off in the distance, having leaves, false advertisement, he came if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves looking like a fig tree. So if it's a fig tree, it ought to have some fig fruit. He found nothing but leaves for the time of figs was not yet. Okay, so bearing fruit, it's a seasonal thing. You got to come into your season to bear fruit. You might not bear fruit. You don't bear fruit overnight. You got to come into your season. Okay, that's something different though. That's something different though. Okay, and Jesus answered and said unto it, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Don't nobody eat fruit from you no more. It's a wrap for you. And his disciples heard it. And we're going to skip down to verse 20. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. That means it was cursed, dried up from the roots. So he cursed it. And they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter called into remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. Now check this out, though. So this is in the natural Jesus was hungry. He wanted some fruit. The tree didn't have no fruit. So what good are you to him? He cursed it. Now, the tree was not out of pocket, though. The tree didn't do nothing wrong because the season, it wasn't its season yet. So the tree didn't do nothing wrong because it wasn't even the season for it to bear fruit. So the tree didn't do nothing wrong, but it's just making a point that if you ain't going to bear fruit, then what good are you to him? In the natural, he was hungry. The tree didn't have no fruit, so he cursed it. What good are you? So in the spiritual, he has a desire. It's not hunger, though. In the spiritual, his desire is not hunger for food, but he has a desire for you to do what he called you and equipped you to do. And if you ain't going to fulfill his desire and you ain't going to fulfill his purpose, then what good are you? Because if he called you to the ministry, then that's part of your purpose. This is what I called you for. This is what I called you to do. And if you ain't going to do it, what good are you to him? He'll curse you. He'll get rid of you for not bearing fruit. Matthew chapter 7, Mark chapter 11. We finna go to Luke 13, and then we finna go to John 15. Yeah, if you ain't bearing no fruit, what good are you to him? You got to do what you called to do. You got to do what you called to do. Yeah, you, 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 you got to do what you called to do, bro. Even if you are living decent, 
even if you are living decent, you still you got to put the work in that he called you to put in if he called you. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, you got to you got to be about the work that he called you to. When he separated Paul and Barnabas, put them to work. Yeah, you you yeah, you you yeah, 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 he got workers. If he called you to be a worker, you got to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because you didn't did your nine to five, huh? That don't mean there ain't no more work to be done. Yeah, yeah. He put that battery in my back. He gassed me up all over again, bro. I was just chilling. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I was going hard on the job, though. I was <laughs> I was preaching and teaching on the job, too. But but then I got in trouble. So I had to I had I was getting a little disorderly. <laughs> I was getting disorderly with it. You know, God is a God of order. You know what I mean? So I was getting a little disorderly with it. So they shut me down on that note. And then it wasn't too long after that. God started, eh, eh, okay, huh? Yeah, it's preaching on the job ain't enough anyway. You know what I mean? That ain't enough anyway. You know what I mean? And uh, but yeah, that's funny how not long after I got cut off on the job, it wasn't too long after that. God say, hey, you got to get back on this Internet. You know, what I mean, get back on this Internet. You know, what I mean, I got it. I got it for sure, word, man. But let's go to Luke 13, man. See how serious this thing is. If And then now that I think about it, bro, it, it's hard for me to um, uh, understand people that uh. Well, I ain't going to say it's hard to understand, but, you know, it really ain't no retirement from the ministry. And then, see, he gave me a different kind of ministry. You know, the ministry that God gave me, it's never been tied. It's never been dependent on church. The Because when I first got, got the Holy Ghost and got on fire, I'm in the streets witnessing, evangelizing. And, and, and for a season, I was real busy in church. But my ministry ain't never been dependent on the church, though. You know what I mean? Now, I do ministry in church. Matter of fact, I'm finna get involved in the ministry at church. I ain't, you know, I just been chilling. But I'm finna get involved in the ministry at church, too. But the ministry that God gave me, it's never been limited or dependent on church, though. You know what I mean? But church is a great place to serve. Church is a great place to serve, but the the way that God deal with me and use me and the ministry that he gave me, it ain't never been dependent on church and ain't never been limited to the four walls of the church. You know what I mean? But anyway, Luke 13, man, we going to start with a uh, verse six. And it's a whole lot in the, in the gospels about fruit, bro. A lot. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Okay? No fruit. That's a problem. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, the husbandman, the one that takes care of the vineyard. Behold, uh oh, three years. See, God is patient. It ain't it ain't the first year it wasn't no fruit and I got a problem. Nah. It's this is three years in. See, God is a long suffering God. He don't he don't never just punish you off the muscle, right off the rip. Nah. And that's what make it tricky too, though. That's what can uh that's kind of what make people think that uh that you can like play with God or that's kind of what make people think that God ain't that that's what make people think that God ain't got no issue with them. Cause soon as you do something wrong, God don't just make something bad happen to you or do something bad to you soon as you did something wrong. You know, God really don't even want to punish you, but if you don't, if you don't correct yourself, then he going to correct you. You know what I mean? But he going to correct you gently. 
You know what I mean? And then you might just be feeling like, you know what I mean? God ain't got none, God ain't got no problem with this. He ain't got no problem with that. You know what I mean? And and then, you know, something real bad could happen. You know what I mean? Or something bad might not even happen. You know, God, man, he don't he don't really want to you you got to have the fear of God, but he don't want you in fear though. You got to have the fear of God. But he don't want you in fear, though. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a scripture in Psalms 50. You know, he's like, you know, you did this and this. And, and I didn't say nothing. And you thought I was cool with it. Like, that's basically what it's saying. He was saying, like, you slander your brother. You like he listed some stuff that he was not cool with. And uh and then God was like, but you thought I was cool with it because I ain't say nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's basically the point, you know what I mean, in Psalm 50, man. And uh, he, he's like, you you thought I was altogether such a one as you. Like, you thought I was in agreement with you because I wasn't saying nothing. But just because I didn't say nothing don't mean I was pleased with what was going on. And, you know, God, a lot of time is just patient, waiting on a person to come to repentance and they feel like, hey, God ain't got no problem with what I'm doing. And you just got to know, though. You just got to know. Even if God ain't rebuking you, even if God ain't making bad stuff happen to you, like, you just got to know. Like, nah, I can't keep I can't keep doing this. I can't keep living like this. I can't keep moving like this. You just got to know. You just got to know because by the time something does happen, it could be so bad it ain't no recovering from it. By the time a chastisement does hit you, it might be so bad that, that, you know what I'm saying, you can't even make a full recovery from it. Like, you just never know. You just never know, bro. But uh, God's patient, though. Soon as you get out of pocket, soon as you stop doing what you should be doing, or soon as you start doing something that you shouldn't be doing, he don't just hit you with a judgment or a chastisement right then. He really going to give you some time. So you come to repentance on your own and he won't even have to chastise you. You know, if you ain't done nothing to nobody, you know, because now once you what you sow, you going to reap. So if you doing bad stuff to people, it's going to come back around some in some way or some form. You know what I mean? But, you know. OK, so he said, it's three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Now, see, he didn't say that the first year or the second year, but this is the third year. So now he's saying, cut it down. Why cumber if it the ground? Why is it taking up space, taking up nutrients and stuff that the other trees could be using? It's just taking up space in the ground. Cut it down. But he didn't say that the first year or the second year. That's that show you the patience of God. But now the third year that came around, I'm tired of playing. Cut that thing down. <laughs> Cut it down. OK, check it. OK, now, now here go a picture of the father and here go a picture of Jesus at the right hand of the father making intercession for us. This is a picture of Jesus at the right hand of the father making intercession for us. Cause he's our high priest our eternal high priest under the order of Melchizedek, man. Stop playing with me. Okay. Okay. Verse eight. And he answering said unto him, he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year. Also give it one more year. Till I, I'm a dig about it. I'm a dung it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fertilize it. I'm a do. I'm a give it special attention. Huh? I'm gonna put some mulch in there, some fertilizer in there. I'm a, I'm gonna give it special attention. He said, I'm a dig about it and dung it. I'm gonna make sure I'm doing every. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna give it special attention. Give it every reason to, to grow properly and bear fruit. Make sure it's getting all the sunshine. I'm, I'm going to take real good care of it. Even better care than I've been doing. I'm going to give it special attention and special care this year. 
And then he says, and if it bear fruit, well, let that tree live. But if it still don't bear fruit, then after that, cut it down. See, that's a picture of Jesus standing in the gap. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's our high priest. He's been through what we've been through. When we get to failing and coming up short, he know what it's like to be a human being. You be tempted at all points, yet without sin. You know what I'm saying? But he's a compassionate high priest. He's been in our shoes. So if anybody is pleading for you to have mercy, it's Jesus. But he ain't he 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 ain't gonna give you forever though. But there it is again. Talking about cutting it down. Trees that don't bear fruit. Uh oh, this just came to me. Uh Matthew three and uh Luke chapter three. He said, the axe is laid to the root of the trees. John the Baptist talking. If you don't bear good, come on, man. I That wouldn't, come on, man. He just gave that to me, man, off the top before I even made it to John 15. What John the Baptist was talking about, Luke chapter 3, same thing in Matthew chapter 3. Okay, right here, verse 9. Uh-oh, now we're going to go verse 8. Fruits worthy of repentance. Okay, okay, yeah, we're we just going to go to verse 8. He talking to the Pharisees and the, the religious leaders that really weren't even interested in God. They just, they just, they had a system set up that served them. You know what I mean? They had a, it, it's like, it's like politicians, basically, like they got a system set up that's going to serve them. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's basically what it is. You know what I mean? Like they, these, they post to, they all post to love God, but they don't really care nothing about God. They, they just want to keep the system the way it is because it benefits them. And all politicians ain't evil, but y'all know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, verse 8, though, bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance, fruits, actions that demonstrate repentance. And begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham, the our father. Well, we're Jewish. We're the children. We're the special people of God. Okay, true. But for I say unto you that God is able of these stones, these rocks, to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Talking about cutting it down. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So he, Jesus, John the Baptist said it first, then Jesus backed out and said the same chain. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing, man. <laughs> okay. And then see, he telling them how he want them to live. You know what I'm saying? The people ask, what shall we do then if we want to bear these fruits? And he basically talking to them about not being greedy, showing love to others, not doing unnecessary violence, uh, not cheating people out of their money, not oppressing people, using your position to take wrongfully from others, you know what I mean? Stuff like that, man. Just, just being right, you know, just being right, man. Be content with your wages, extortion and robbery, not to be doing all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Okay. Talking about bearing fruit, but that, that's more along the lines of character fruit right there. But it's all the same, character fruit, ministry fruit. If you call to ministry, character fruit. You don't have no business oppressing people and extorting people if you name the name of Jesus. What the heck? You know what I mean? But a lot of stuff go on, though. Okay, so that was... So look, man, this is Matthew 3 and Luke 3, which is the same warning. Then Jesus gave a warning in Matthew 7. Jesus gave another warning, a different one, but it's the same thing in Luke 13. Then he gave us another warning in John 15. Like, 
you can't miss this. Like God, God, hey, I ain't never heard nobody preach on it either. Just a sermon on fruitfulness. I ain't never heard it. You know what I'm saying? God gave me this word. You know what I'm saying? This is from on high. But it's for me first, but I know it ain't just for me because don't no temptation, no situation come upon you that's not common to man. We all can go through the same stuff. We all go through the same stuff. You know what I mean? Whatever one person go through, somebody else going through the same thing. Maybe not everybody and definitely maybe not at the same time, but the same stuff, some of the same stuff this person go through. This person over here go through go through some of the same stuff. Maybe not everything, you know what I mean. But we we all go through the same type of stuff, man. You know what I mean. Okay, now let's go to John fifteen. This is really what this is one of the first things that came to me when I was developing the message. Okay, now check this out. Jesus talking. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husband. In Luke thirteen, it was the other way around. God was the uh, God was the one that owned the vineyard, and Jesus was the vine dresser, the one that took care of it. So now it's a little it's a little change right here, though. Different metaphor right here. He said, "Now Jesus saying, I'm the vine, and my Father is the one that takes care of the uh of the of the vine." He the one to take care of the vineyard. But let's get to the point. The point is still the same, though. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, uh oh, he take it away. Subtract it. He takes it away. He purgeth it. Oh, okay. Hold up, hold up. Now, now it get tricky right here. It get tricky right here. See, see that that's why God didn't convict me about not bearing fruit because I was being purged. <laughs> but when it's time to get busy again, you got to get busy. Okay, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes away. And we know when he talk about bearing fruit, he talking about bearing good fruit. And every branch that bears fruit, uh-oh, uh-oh, watch this. See, some of y'all be getting discouraged because you done took a loss or some of y'all get discouraged because you done took a setback. That's just the pruning. That's just the purging. Huh? Getting stuff out the way. T.D. Jake said it's, it's a form of circumcision because he's cutting back. It feel like you taking a loss. Feel like you took a demotion instead of a promotion. Huh? But think about this though. Like a slingshot. I might be finna sling you forward, but watch this. I got to bring you back before I sling you, before I launch you forward, though. See, that's why if you go through something that might seem like an unfruitful. <laughs> hey, when you go through something that might seem like an unfruitful season. If you know you really with God, if you know you really rocking with him. He ain't setting you back. He just purging you. He just pruning you, huh? Purifying you for the future so you can do better. It, it seemed like a setback, but the setback is only so you can go forward. You know what I mean? Okay, I ain't even read it. Every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. So he got to cut some stuff out the way. He got to shave down some stuff, cut down some stuff, pull out, remove. He's pruning, he's purging so you can bear more fruit. So sometimes God will set you back or he'll allow you to take a setback, but it's only so you can go further in the long run. See, and this one thing I learned too, ups and downs going to come in life. And we human, right? So we mess up, we sin, we fall, and we take setbacks. But if you a real one, a setback ain't nothing. Because you're going to pop back up if you a real one. And then even if you don't do anything 
Even if you don't do anything to set yourself back, something will happen that was out of your control and it'll set you back. See, I learned. A lot of times I might make a mistake or do something I shouldn't have and I suffer a setback. But then I've been in seasons where I was just, I didn't make no mistakes. I was just doing everything right. But then something that's out of my control will set me back. You know what I mean? Like something always going to set you back, whether it's your fault or whether it's not your fault is the only question. But setbacks going to come. Offenses going to come. Trials and tests, tribulations, uh, uh, adversity. It's going to come. Some things you brought on yourself, some things you didn't bring on yourself. You know what I mean? But stuff is going to always come. You know what I mean? And it's going to seem like it sets you back, but it's only so you can go further in the future when you really rocking with God. I know that. I'm telling you. Okay. Because, yeah, purging, pruning, that that's cutting. That's cutting away. You know, that's cutting away, trimming, shaving. You know what I mean? That's cutting away. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to verse three. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Verse four, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. You can't bear godly fruit without God, period. And then if you want to always bear fruit, he said, you got to abide in me. What's that? That's fellowship. That's relationship. That's fellowship. That's communion. That's maintaining a, a proper relationship with Jesus. So if you do that, you going to bear fruit. But that don't mean you're not going to go through a, a unfruitful season because that's the trimming. That's the purging. You know what I mean? But that's only a season. And then you supposed to bear more fruit when you make your comeback. You know what I mean? But the key is abiding in him, relationship with him. You can bear fruit without Jesus, but you can't bear godly fruit without Jesus. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he's not going to bear fruit if, you, if he don't abide in Jesus. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth, there it is again, as a branch, and is withered, just like he withered the fig tree. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So that's four warnings about not bearing fruit or not bearing good fruit. And then not to mention the parable of the sower. You know what I mean? But I kind of also feel like um, he, he said, uh, you know, you can you can be. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Well, it, it was still some more. Maybe I let, let me read about one more thing. Oh, man. OK, OK. Let me show you this, too. Next verse, verse seven. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So to me, that means that don't. Now, we already know you got to pray according to the will of God and all that. But it, it seems to me like, because I, I done studied all that. He said, you have not because you ask not. But then he said, you ask and receive not because ye ask amiss. Your motives ain't right. Uh, that you may consume it on your own lust. So when you pray, motivation, your motives matter. Uh, it had to be according to the will of God. First John 5, 13 and 14. Uh, he said, when you pray, you need to forgive. You need to get rid of unforgiveness in your heart. If you won't answer prayer, you got to have faith. Uh, but it looks like he's saying when you pray, I'm going to do it for you. Right. 
And one somewhere in John, he said, if you pray in my name, I will do it for you. But this time he's talking about people that's abiding in him. He's talking about people that's bearing fruit. And then he say, you ask what you will and I'm going to do it. So you being a fruitful person have something to do with you getting prayers answered. He going to be more quick to answer the prayer of a person that's fruitful than a person that ain't fruitful. He going to be more quick to answer the prayer of a person that's abiding in him than one who not abiding in him. And then when you really abiding in him, there's a better chance you're going to have a right motive for what you praying. You know what I mean? There's a better chance that you're going to pray according to the will of God when you abide in him. There's a better chance that you're going to pray according to the will of God. There's a better chance that you're going to pray with a right motive. You know what I mean? When you abiding in him and when you're fruitful, you know what I mean? There's a better chance that he going to do what you asking him to do, especially if it's going to help you be more fruitful. Okay. 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 Verse eight, herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Okay. Let, let, let me go. Let me go here real quick. And then we're going to go to the next video. Okay, verse 16, ye have not chosen me, or we did choose Jesus, but he chose us before we ever chose him. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go. See, that's how you know we're talking about ministry fruit right here. Because if you're talking about character fruit, I don't have to go nowhere for God to... to uh, for God to develop my character to be more and more like Jesus. I ain't got to go nowhere for that to happen. He talking about ministry when he said, go and bring forth fruit. He talking about go do the work of the ministry, sent them out. That's what apostle means, sent ones. Then he said, I'm sending you to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost bounds of the earth. He talking about <clears throat> ministry fruit in the context. Okay, he said, I chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. And here it is again, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Yeah, he gonna give you what you need when it comes to helping you to do what God called you to do. When it comes to you bearing the fruit that God ordained for you to bear, he going to do whatever, you know what I'm saying, you ask in regard to that. But if it's just some selfish stuff, he may or he may not. You know what I mean? But when it have to when you praying for God to help you fulfill the purpose that he called you to do, oh yeah, he going to do whatever. Because it was his plan anyway. And he know what you need to do what he called you to do. So, yeah, he going to answer all them prayers. You know what I mean? Let's go to the next one.